All right, everybody, welcome to the Thursday episode of Locked on NHL. We have one team that has punched their ticket to the Stanley Cup final. That is the Florida Panthers. They continue to do amazing things in the postseason. Can they finish it off? New episode of Locked on NHL coming at you. You're Locked on NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to a Thursday episode of Locked On NHL. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your co-host from Locked On Avalanche, Chris Maselli. Joining me as always on the Thursday edition from Locked On Lightning, Mr. Adam Denker. And uh, we thank you for making this your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. And on today's episode, as you can see with our fancy, shiny new graphics, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, um, the rundown for today's episode, we will obviously be discussing the Florida Panthers, uh, the Hurricanes, another sweep for them in a conference final. What does that mean for this team going forward? And an interesting topic that I threw out on Twitter on my uh, t- my show's uh, Twitter page, and that's load management. It's more of a thing in the NBA. And why is it a thing in the NBA, but not so much in the NHL? So we'll talk about that. A little bit later on, but we have to start, Mr. Denker, with the team that punched their ticket to the Stanley Cup final. I don't think anybody filling out their brackets at the beginning of these playoffs, unless you were a Panthers fan and just being that homer, which is completely fine, uh, and penciling them in as a Stanley Cup final team. Outside of that, I can't think of anybody who would have put the Florida Panthers in the final but they are playing the best hockey that they've played all season. And they're they're playing the best hockey in the NHL. And there's only a couple teams left at this stage of the game, but man, are they, they are impressing right now. Yeah. Not to sound cliche, but they are really finding ways to win games. And look at last night (laughs) as an example. I mean, that I, I, I felt like as the game went on, even with how tight it was, you, you kind of always felt though with how Florida has been playing that they were just going to find a way to win. And that, I mean, listen, that's what good teams do in the playoffs. That's the difference between, you know, getting swept, sorry, Hurricanes, mm-hmm. and going on to play for a Stanley Cup final. And, you know, I I was one of those people and, and I will totally own up to it. I was one of those people for obviously – if you're watching on YouTube, bias reasons. Um, I did not believe in this Panthers team to begin this season. I said, you know what? The Kachuk deal, that's just a a, a really just half-hearted thought, you know, response to them getting swept by the Lightning last season. Mm-hmm. And it's really worked out. I mean, this team since Matthew Kachuk has touched down in Florida has really just become – a different team, I, a yeah. complete 180 since last year. And to think about it, what I think makes this whole performance by this team even more special is really it's not entirely to their credit for the reason why they're at. You have to throw a little teeny bit of credit towards the Chicago Blackhawks for beating the Pittsburgh How Penguins. How crazy is that? The, last week of the season. Uh, <laughs> We can't forget that. Right? Like, I mean, all they had to do was it, it was the last two games of the season were were Chicago and then Columbus, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess that's the beauty of the NHL is nothing is is you know you can't take anything for granted. But come on, I mean, everything was just for the taking for Pittsburgh, and they couldn't get past the first game. And look who benefits from that. The team who benefits is in the Stanley Cup final. That's crazy. And the other team that beat them got the first overall pick. I mean, completely yeah. that game. This is going to be something yeah. where I wouldn't be surprised if this turns in, if, especially if the Panthers win the cup, this is going to be something that's going to turn into a 30 for 30 at some point. <laughs> completely, I'm telling you completely altering possibly the NHL for the next 15 years. Uh, oh, oh, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. With Bedard. And then who, who knows if, you know, Florida, whether they win or lose in this final, you know, we we've seen from teams that lose in the final or get very far 
when it turns for the positive, when they take that next yeah. step, it, it really changes them for the best. And and I I mean, really looking at this series though, and, and I think we both picked Carolina. If I'm I know I picked Carolina. Carolina. I did. I had Carolina in the final, yeah. Yep. I mean, how surprising is this? And and I know there's gonna be a lot of conversation that is gonna be brought in about this. Mm-hmm. Is this more so given are are we gonna give more credit to Florida? for sweeping or kind of look at Carolina and be like this team dropped the ball. Uh, we'll talk about Carolina specifically in the next segment, but no, I think you have to give credit to, to the Florida Panthers, especially the, you know, the way that they, they, I mean, you sweep a team yeah, um, and the way that they did it, they were, they were not blowouts. They were tough, hard fought one goal games. You know, it could have went either way, you have a four overtime game that could have went either way. The very next yeah. game is an overtime game that obviously could have went either way. Like you, and then you know, it was a, a one to nothing game. Like they were all close games, but that going forward, I think benefits the Panthers because they they know that they can play tight games and win them. They can play on the road and win them. Their road record is incredible in in yeah. this postseason. So uh, I think everything right there, the the. The bright lights of the Stanley Cup final is the only thing that they have to worry about. They don't have to worry about who the opponent is, which likely seems like it's going to be Vegas. They don't have to worry about playing on the road. They don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And yeah. once the, the those uh, initial bright lights of the Stanley Cup uh, wear off after the first couple shifts and they can focus on the game, I think they just get down to business and, and just play how they've been playing and they'll be okay. I don't think whoever they end up against, and like I said, we're assuming it's Vegas, they're in it. Like they are clearly not a pushover. Clearly. Right. If they haven't shown that to you in these playoffs, you have not been watching. So if it is Vegas, who's a very good team, uh, you know, with $95 million out on the ice there, um, I'm not going to let that go. They're, they're up for the challenge. They're up for the challenge. And how validating is it? for the Panthers franchise. You had a very good year last year, President's Trophy. I don't remember exactly what they had, but it was more than 120 points on the season. And then you go out in the first, I mean, you you know this script. You, you've lived this script. Uh, and, and and you change coaches, right? Uh, yeah. and, and you make that big trade and it didn't get off to the best start. And you had some help along the way, like we said, with Pittsburgh, and you took advantage of it. I just, I just feel like it's so validating from top to bottom for this franchise to all the moves that they made and all the things that they had to go through Yeah, to get where they are now. It's impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and I think the question a lot of people are going to ask now, it's not a lot of time off. You know, they did get the the series finished pretty quickly and, you know, the Western conference could be pretty much wrapped up tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, and we both know this. We've both our teams were in the Stanley cup final last year. Yeah. My team How, won it though. Come on, come <laughs> on, uh, yeah. How much of an emphasis do you think? Cause I think that this Florida team is riding high um, on just momentum. How much of an emphasis do you put on, Oh, well, actually, let me rephrase that. Where would you lean? Do you prefer having days off, especially when your team is rolling like what the Panthers are? Or do you prefer to kind of just get back to it as soon as possible? Uh, you can make an argument either way, right? And and I, I kind of don't like having too much time off. It's good to get a couple days, let this sink in, really understand the moment um and then you do want to get right back to it like you're rolling right now right yeah. you you don't want to sit for too long um and you always hear that rust con- you know conversation um there there is some validity to that for a yeah. very short amount of time it doesn't last too long but if you're if you're the panthers you want to get like you feel great right now yeah you just swept a team to get into the stanley cup final this wasn't r- round 1 or round 2 like this was the eastern conference finals where those are that's supposed to be obviously the other best team in your conference, and you you beat you beat them four in a row. Tough games, but you beat them four. In a row. You want to keep that momentum going. Take a couple of days off, rest up because you definitely want some rest. But I think too much is not a good thing to start. 
and they probably won't have it. I mean, he, with with the we'll see how the Vegas game goes, but um, I think they'll be okay. They'll, either way, they'll be okay. But they they would like a couple of days of rest. Sure, why not? Yeah. At this stage in the game, I would imagine if Vegas does wins tonight, we would probably see game one Sunday, most likely. Maybe at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 11 o'clock <laughs> start. <laughs> Please, NHL. Yeah. Um, maybe right Sunday after Sunday Monday. night baseball, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it'll be on the Ocho. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's hear from Bird Dogs and then we will uh, talk about the team that lost this Eastern Conference final, and that is the Carolina Hurricanes. Where do they go from here? But first, we have Bird Dogs, and I don't have the uh, lower for that, so we're just going to roll with this. Bird Dogs, uh, we got we got some samples in the mail. Are you a golfer, Denker? I mean, I, I, we're, we're pretty good friends here, but I don't know if you're a golfer or not. I golfed quite a bit before COVID hit, and you know they closed, obviously, a lot of things down by me. I'm trying to get back into it, but, you know. I mean, just... if clothing could get you back into golfing, could Bird Dogs be it? Bird dogs might be the best thing for me. It actually might yeah. help me get the ball back onto the fairway. Clear, uh, I don't want to make the claim that bird dogs can improve your golf game because that would be false advertising. But you can look good while you're golfing. As I'm fishing for my ball on the fescue. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they, they sent us, uh, some, uh, free samples of these, uh, new, new shorts that they have. You can get them with or without an extra liner for a little bit extra support down there if you want that. Uh, but with, with, you know, they are so comfortable. You can wear them either, like we said, like in, on, on the golf course, hanging out in the backyard, uh, hang, lounging around. You can wear them out to a nice fancy dinner if you want. They're very versatile. Yeah. Very, very versatile. And the three things you always hear with bird dogs is the fit is a perfect fit. The comfort can't be measured and the versatility. We just told you, like you can go through a, your entire day and not change your pair of bird dogs. You can wear them in many different situations. So if you go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL and enter the promo code locked on NHL, they're going to throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order and you know how much those things can cost you get that puppy look at that thing look at that it, product placement baby it almost you know that's almost uh tampa bay lightning blue right there <clears throat> that color so go to birddogs.com slash locked on nhl put in the promo code locked on nhl get some amazing comfortable shorts or pants and a beautiful new yeti style tumbler all right <clears throat> Let's move on to the Carolina Hurricanes. And um, I, I thought it was going to be a good series with the way that Florida was playing. Um, I thought this thing was going to go seven. And um, obviously it didn't. But the the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, what are we thinking from this team going forward? Is there Are we, are we going to expect a lot of changes this offseason with the team? Or is it just, hey, yeah, we got swept. But uh, they were all close games and one or two changes here and there and we'll be OK. Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, there's there's definitely going to be a level of caution, I think, from the organization when they reevaluate things um, this off upcoming offseason. But, you know, because as we saw what was the case in Toronto over the last couple of years, you know, there was tons of 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 probably i would i would imagine some sort of temptation to to at least blow it up now we might see something a little bit more than adding pieces up in toronto but carolina's in a very strange situation right now because if you look at who's coming off the books this year they have a handful of forwards that are going to be ufas they have a they have a, a few defensemen i mean the notable names that are going to be coming off the books is Jesper Foss, Derek Stepan, Paul Stasny, Jordan, Jordan Stahl, and Mackenzie Mc, Uh, it, You know, these are guys that some might say are – some of them are a little bit at the end of their career. Paul Stasny's 37. Jordan Stahl, 34, a little bit, you know, bumped up throughout his career. 
you know, you kind of have to like look within and and say, you know, should we divert our money elsewhere? As we all know, Chris, in this salary cap uh, era that we're having right now, where the money has been just so tight over the last couple of years, you know, teams are going to be very nitpicky, probably more than usual as to where their their buck's going to go. And I think we're going to see some sort of some sort of penny pinching possibly, or, or maybe overanalyzing this off season with Carolina. But as for like a blowing up situation, I don't think so. I think really what it comes down to, maybe you add a couple of pieces here and there, uh, maybe trade uh, for a couple of pieces in the off season, or maybe even look uh, within your organization to bring up some young names. But um, what, do, what do you think? I mean, if you're the GM of the Carolina hurricanes, where do you go from here, Chris? It's tough, and I, you know, it's uh, covering you know the Avalanche. Uh, my my attention is more on the West Coast than really the East Coast. But uh, one of my very close friends lives in Charlotte, and even you know, not that far any, from Raleigh, and he's a big uh, Hurricanes fan. So I talked to him quite a bit about it, and he just he just he likes the team as it's constructed, and it's kind of interesting. I don't really think do you have to make some moves? Sure. Sure, I mean every team does. Even the team that wins the Stanley Cup has to kind of make some moves, right? Yeah. But um, I I always get like it's always kind of funny to me where a team can make it to like an Eastern Conference final, and before that Eastern Conference final even starts, everything is great. Everybody's happy, like oh the team's playing great, and then when the team loses the the conference final. Now the the narrative completely switches and it's like, oh, do we, we need do we need how, what do we need to blow up here? Who needs to go? Who needs to come in? So it's just it, I always find it funny how within like a, a two week period, if the, the series goes seven games, the talking points completely change. Nobody's talking about the stuff that they were talking about now. They weren't talking about that before this series started. They made it to the Eastern Conference final. Yeah, they were they were one of four teams remaining. I don't I don't get behind that thinking of everything needs to change. I get yeah. the, behind the thinking of some things need to change. Yeah. Make some tweaks here and there, but you have a good core there. You have a really good coach. Let him coach. Bring in some new blood for him to coach and 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 add to his system, which clearly is working. They're a winning team. And and give it another go next year. So uh, as far as blowing the whole thing up, no, you don't. You don't do that. You do what a, nor- what a team usually does. Yeah. Go find. You know, you're going to lose some guys in free agency. That's normal. Uh, if they're guys that you didn't want to lose, you tried to keep. Then you have to replace them with you know similar style of player, and then you piece your the puzzle together again and make another run for it. Yeah. And and you brought up Rod Brindamore, um, which I I really wanted to ask you about this. Did you see his his quote the other day, what what he said after the game? You know what? Somebody told me, like, asked me the same thing. Like, did you see what Brindamore? And I'm like, no, I got to go look. I have it in front of me right now. So he he was quoted after the game saying, uh, that's the unfortunate part of this, that we're going to look back and everyone's going to say you got swept and that's not what happened. What happened? They, what they, what happened then? <laughs> what does he say happened? I I that it is was, probably one of the more puzzling things I've ever heard a a, a coach say after a game. And yeah. I I I think what he was trying to say was more so that what kind of like what you alluded to earlier in the show. These were close games, and I think in the mm-hmm. if you're looking at the series as a whole, game by game. You could one could say if maybe a puck bounces a certain way or a call goes another way, Carolina doesn't get swept. And I think maybe that what he was trying to get to, but just okay. maybe, you know, obviously the, all the emotions that are running through <clears throat> after losing uh didn't in come the out way that they way. did. Yeah, it didn't come the, the words just weren't there. Uh, and he just didn't know what to do with his hands. So <laughs> uh <laughs> so that's how I took it. Um, that, that that is an interesting quote. I think I, I I'm agree. I think I understand where he was trying to go with it. It just didn't didn't come out right because you you, you did get swept. <laughs> That's according to the scoreboard, you got swept. So 
usually um, how a playoff series series yeah. works. You yeah. you don't you don't win any games. You got swept. But, yeah, yeah. We didn't lose four games. Our season isn't over. We didn't lose four games. They won four games. That's yeah. Well, don't I hate <laughs> that ESPN. The, the, uh, every time they ask a question, they, they'll, they'll do this. Uh, did did the Florida Panthers win or did the Carolina Hurricanes lose? Shut up with that stuff. It's the dumbest talking point that they come up with over and over and over again. I hate it. Hate it. Coming up next, we sit down with Tim Tebow and LeBron James to talk more about it. So. <laughs> Yeah, locked on LeBron tweets. That's what we're yeah. going to do now. But uh, what we are going to do is hear from eBay Motors and then uh, an interesting topic, which I threw out on Twitter, uh, about load management. If you're not familiar with it, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll explain it to you. But first, <clears throat> eBay Motors, and for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head over to eBay Motors. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your car to the My Garage tab and look for the green check to know that the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. And we shop on eBay Motors. You have over 122 million parts to choose from, so you'll be back in the game in no time. And after all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only and exclusions apply. All right. Uh, are we good? Uh, uh, am I good on your end? Because I feel like my... Uh... Internet's going up and down. I don't know if we're... Uh, you're all good. <laughs> I'm good. Good. It, it's right. it's not that it's not working. It's 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 sounding better. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, we have you know the NBA and the NHL. Their seasons kind of run pretty much parallel to one another. They have the same amount of games. Obviously, seasons start around the same time. So you have you know the the lottery is picked around the same time, and therefore the draft is held around the same time. And heading into this year's draft, for both leagues, uh, it seems like there is consensus number ones who are kind of labeled as franchise changing. Um, you know, if you're obviously an NHL fan and listening to this, you've heard the name Connor Bedard uh, ad nauseum for the last two years. And we all know he is likely heading to Chicago. And we all know, like, the expectations for him are through the roof and understandably so he's he has all the makings of that guy who can be that franchise changing player over in the nba which i just don't follow i'm i not as much as i used to anyway um when i say not as much as i used to i mean like from the 90s i'm like a 90s new york knicks miami heat guy like that that was my era uh and i just don't watch it anymore i just feel like it's kind of like boring lately um so I don't really pay attention to the prospects coming up and 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 college and and things like that, but I've heard the name of this. Uh, and you're gonna have to help me with his last name, Victor. When can do you know it? Just like off Wemben Wemben Maya. <laughs> I have no Wemben Yama Wemben Yama. I think that's how you say it. I apologize to him for butchering his last name. But you're hearing the same thing about him and the San Antonio Spurs who won their lottery, um, that he is this – you hear people talk about him, and he's like the second coming of like LeBron. Um, we're not locked on NBA, so we're not going to talk about that. But I will say just – he got he's, he, dude's got to eat a cheeseburger. Um, but I'm already hearing – about this this topic that you hear a lot about in the NBA circles, and that's load management, which is flat out benching guys uh, to not overwork them. And the NBA has been doing this for a little while now. And this is benching not just you know not just guys like him, but guys like Steph Curry, guys like LeBron James. So they are fresh and they don't get worn down over the course of the season. 
So my question to you is like, you're hearing about this already with this Wimbanyama guy and you're not hearing it at all with Connor Bedard and you don't hear it at all in the NHL. If a guy's coming into the NHL, he's expected to jump in and you got to play and you got to earn your keep. And we're not going to sit you. You, you got to, we're paying you to go play. And in the NBA, it's, it's almost like prima Donna ish. If, if you ask me from the outside looking in, that's what I, that's kind of my take on this. No, I, I, I completely agree. And it, and it's very, it, it's unfair to hockey players when, when you look at this, the, the differences in, in what these players make. The, you know, mm. we're talking about the highest salary, Connor McDavid. I think Connor McDavid or maybe Tyler Sagan make the most the AAV. I think no, Sagan no, 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 no. It's, it's Nathan McKinnon. McKinnon, what it's is Nathan he at like? 12.6. 12.6. Okay. So, I, I look at that and, you know, those guys for the most part play 82 games, whereas, yeah. you know, the most you'll get out of, like you said, some of the top players in the NBA, maybe 65, maybe 70 if we're lucky. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those guys are making way more money, probably 30 million more a year. And, oh, easy. Yeah. And my thing is, is a lot of it has to do with and you know you could go to locked on nba or you know this is a whole another conversation for another time it also has to do with the 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 chemistry of the league between the players and the league where the nba is clearly a players league where the nhl is kind of just like just another day at the office kind of mentality just you know whatever it is mm-hmm. we got to do we'll get it done and i think that really is more so just how the whole idea of being a teammate and and what it means to be a teammate and play the game. I think what it comes down to is that, is that, you know, the NBA, these guys look at themselves as more so as just brands, you know, what can they do to have some sort of life outside of their NBA career? Hmm. Whereas these NHL guys, all they do is they live to get up in the morning, work out, go to the rink and that's it. And Hmm. You know, when yeah, I mean, they don't get yeah. the like sponsorship deals and stuff like no. that, that other sports do. Um, some guys do, uh, yes, yeah, but not from top to bottom. Um, you know, more so that the NBA guys do, and and I get it. Like, I the argument for load management is well, you know, these guys are commodities, these, these guys are, are the franchise, and if they get hurt, the, the franchise could suffer for that. Yeah. To which I say, N- I don't believe that. Like, do you really think that, like, LeBron, if LeBron James were to get injured, number one, that's not going to hurt his value. Yeah. Uh, could it, would it hurt like ticket sales? Maybe. It's not like the arena is going to be empty. Right. Except for one man still driving and striving as fast as he can. Name that song, Mr. Denker. You can't. I can't. Cake the distance. I'm- Come on, man. Come on. I need, I need you to. Stick with me here, man. Um, but I don't like. I, I don't think it'd be, be so like catastrophic to the franchise. LeBron James is still going to sell jerseys. His name is still going to sell jerseys. Yeah. Right. The Lakers will be just fine. And and what happened? Like he has been injured, from my understanding. Yeah. Like he he does get injured from like. It's just. I don't know. I I feel like it's it's the, and and to the fans, especially the road fans. Who yeah. want to see, and that's usually when they bench these guys. I think is on the road because they don't want to take away from the home fans. Yeah, but the away fans who might only get one or two chances to see these guys during the course of a the season, they're the ones that get the shaft for it. Yeah, uh, I mean, being, I mean, being, I, I, I don't know. Being a fan of the NHL, like we're not used to that, and we're used to you know macho men. <laughs> you know, who, who was the guy that got? 30 stitches in his face and came back. Uh, Morgan Barron. Yeah. Like th- those like are guys. 70 something. Yeah. Oh, was it was a 70. Yeah. Sorry. I-, I shorted him 40 stitches. I, I, um, I think if, I-, I think we both said to each other the night that happened, if that happened to an NBA player, he'd be out for the rest of the season. Uh, with, without a doubt. 
And and uh, let us and let I us, would understand that. I would be out for the rest of the season too. And, and let us just say that we're not here to make this point about just trashing the NBA. We're just I think what we're trying to get to, Chris, is that or maybe the question we ask ourselves and and the fans as well, you know, who's more valuable to their franchise, Connor Bedard or our friend who will be drafted by the San Antonio Spurs, when even if he young. does live up to the hype. Um, Cause but, they are saying, they are yeah. saying that he is, he is a better prospect than what LeBron was coming out of high school, which I find that hard to believe. Cause I remember LeBron coming out of high school. Yeah. That was a big deal. Yeah. But that's my problem is if you want to do it with LeBron James now, I kind of get that. Dude's yeah. like pushing 40. Like I yeah. can understand that. But you're already talking about it with a kid who is like 18 years old. You know, if, if an injury happens, it's going to be because it's a freak thing. Not because you're overworking him. He can he can take the minutes. He can play the games. Well, and and, my, and that's where we are right off the bat with this guy. Well, my question to you, Chris, me. I because I think it's more so his size. You hinted at it when we started the conversation about that. You know, mm -hmm. it's very much documented that he is as thin as a hockey stick. <laughs> he is, um, really, yeah. And, and you know, there there has been some talk around Connor Bedard's size as well. He, mm -hmm. he is, and and I have expressed some concern. You know, can he? As we kind of see mostly with old rookies, um, you know, the size and the strength is going to be a big issue. Now, if you're the Chicago Blackhawks and, you know, most likely he's going to be on the team on opening night. Oh, right? yeah. Absolutely. I think we can both agree that's going to happen. Yeah. But is there going to be. Do you think there's going to be a moment or a conversation to be had if you see him struggling after a month and it's not because of the talent? It's mm -hmm. it's more so because of size um lack thereof and mm -hmm. it comes down to a point where he's just getting blown up by like ryan reeves guys like that on a nightly basis do yeah. you almost have to either healthy scratch him against certain teams just to protect him because yeah, I, I i'm sure there's going to be a certain percentage of the league that's going to go out there gunning for him being like oh you're the next big thing yeah. let's see what you got and oh sure sure but um, this is where, you know, the self-policing comes into play. And this is where his teammates got to run to his defense. He's like, no, you, you don't you don't touch the golden ticket. You leave that alone. You, and, and we can, you know, if you want to man up and if you're going to go after him, I got you got guys on the team that will address that. Yeah. And they'll stop doing it. I mean, you don't do that in other sports. That's that's where the NHL has that over other sports is they, they can get, they can, you know, mix it up. And only have to sit for a couple minutes because of it, right. not get thrown out of a game, face suspensions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, is it going to happen? Someone guys are going to give him nudges, no doubt, no doubt about it. But I hope it just doesn't escalate to the point of your delivery trying to hurt the guy. Um, you know, are there going to be some idiots out there that try to? Uh, you, you can't. It's it's tough to answer that. You don't really know. So. But he might have some struggles. I mean, that that's just the nature of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is the best hockey league in, in, in on the planet. You're gonna run into some some struggles, and you just gotta work through them. And but they will give him time to do that, and they'll keep putting him out there. And they're not gonna sit him because they're just you know concerned. Like this is what they paid for. This is what the people pay for. Show up. Show up. Yeah. And our league does it. And their league doesn't seem to want to do that. So that's where we're at. All right. What do you think? Comment away in the comments section if you have uh, opinions on that. But it's going to wrap it up for today on the Thursday episode of Locked On NHL. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in and making it your first listen. Uh, we'll be back next week. Obviously, it's going to be Stanley Cup by then. So uh, we'll be discussing that and whatever else is going on around the league. For Mr. Adam Denker of Locked On Lightning, I am Chris Maselli with Locked On Avalanche. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week.